This is the Red Bull Ramp Podcast. If you aren't expecting an adult language, why even bother listening? Welcome, my friends, to the show never ends. This is the Red Bull Ramp Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Iapico. I'm Truman, and this is episode 456, Raya Sees Red. Raya Saw Red. Raya Saw Red. Yep. <laughs> I get that in a few times. That, that sound bite, literally right, right before we hit record, I pulled it down. I'm like, I'm going to use it. And then after the first time, I'm like, I got to use it twice. And then the third time. Uh, yeah. So the Chicago game did not end up like anybody was hoping for. No, not even close. No. <laughs> first time I got to use that one for real this year. Um, so Chicago, a 0-0 draw at home. Right side, they didn't lose. So at least there's that. Um, so before we get into it with our thoughts, uh, should we do tweets or the voicemail part? I'll read off the tweets, and then we'll get to the voicemail. How's that sound? Okay. So just a few tweets. So Jeremiah at Red Coach J said, Happy we got a point being down a man for so long. Frustrated with a point when the chances were there multiple times. Yeah. Thought Sando played it really smart and pretty gutsy. Really hope Stroud's injury isn't nearly as bad as it looked. Now, they said he had surgery, so we don't know what the timetable is going to be at this point. Oh, I think um, exactly you're at this point. Yeah. At NYC underscore Ty, Sando to Fashion said, Reyes has got to go. Um, hopefully he will be going back to the bench for a while. Um, and our friend Creepy Taxi Steven Santos says, ugly, well-earned, 10-man, 0-0 draw. Yeah. All right. Uh, before we get into our thoughts, uh, we do have a voicemail. I haven't listened to it. I wonder who it's from. Hmm. Hey, guys. How you doing tonight? Um, honestly, I don't think the game was bad. It definitely got into a real low, maybe in the second half. But, like, you've been down a man for, like, more than 45 minutes. I still have to look at that red card, but it's probably sure enough. The Reyes is probably gone for, like, a good few games. Maybe, I, I'm hoping I'm wrong, but it's like, it, it might, if you follow the trend, Reyes might be gone for a bit. But, like, he didn't let up a score to Tomas Barlino, score, you know, soccer player of the year for the Chicago Fire. I can't particularly complain, honestly. I don't think it was a bad game. It definitely, like, again, minus the lull, you did what you have to do. You got your 0 0. It would have been really fucking nice for that one open goal. But after that, you know, you did not too bad. That's basically it. We keep going. Still technically on top of the East after me checking. Maybe I'm wrong. Please let me know afterwards in hindsight. Great to talk to you guys again. Have a good night. Well, he was right. He was gone. He has gone for a few games. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it was announced today that they were recording. Uh, Reyes suspended one extra game. So that means he is a two game suspension, one for the red, one for. Um, wait, actually, is it one for the red or two for the red? I forget if it's two now for three. No, it's always one, right? And they gave him an additional. So he's, he's suspended for two games. I could have sworn at some point there was a red is two game suspension. That's why I was. I, I don't believe so. I believe it's just the one. Okay. Well, worst case, he's out for three games anyway. So, um, yeah, one extra game by the disciplinary committee, which honestly, he got off light in that respect. Yeah. Um, uh, so let's get into it. Oh, and by the way, uh, we are still technically tied for the Eastern Conference lead with Miami. I think they have a slight goal difference advantage, but that's about it. Yeah. Uh, let's get into our thoughts. Truman, you go first. Your dislike. What did you dislike the most about this match? Uh, I mean, the most obvious thing. It was a complete game-changing moment. I mean, there's a little lot of things we can definitely nitpick here, but it was such a completely ridiculously unnecessary foul 
he was very fortunate that the ball, it wasn't when um, the ball was coming into the box because I believe they called it since it was before the kick was made. That's the only reason it wasn't a penalty kick. Yeah. So they were very fortunate in that situation, but there was, there is no need for that in any situation to throw your arm back like that. It was so stupid and completely unnecessary. And any player who plays professional soccer should know to never do that. There's just no excuse. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I don't want to belabor the Reyes thing. It, it was an idiotic move. Uh, my dislike will just be the fact that we hit the post three times. Yes. <laughs> um, and the, the first one, I don't know how he got so fucking lucky he bounced off the keeper the way he did. But honestly, the second two, that sequence at the end of the game, one of those should have gone in. It was just unfortunately that kind of night for the Red Bulls where they weren't going to get that bounce. But yeah, being down a man for over 45 minutes and getting that, those chances at the end of the game, like that's what you would expect out of a team that can counter almost like yep. we, it's almost like our players have learned to adapt to situations yeah uh, but just the fact that we couldn't put that ball away just and then and, and an additional dislike is just that we couldn't score before the red card we feel uh, we should have yeah because again it was kind of showing that they were playing uh the way they play this year like that attacking they were they were making passes they were having opportunities at that point you're like hey the goal's coming right at some point the goal's going to happen you can kind of sense it yeah it was just it was just we weren't getting lucky on that that finishing touch and you knew once it could like if if the record never happened we got one goal we probably would have poured it on and gotten like two or three more right like that one would have just like broken chicago's back and we'd probably been over the way that yeah. at least that's the way it felt to me before the red card was right we yeah get, we get the one and it's over but it was never to be so um likes uh i'm honestly i'm liking how pissed off lewis morgan was when he came off the field you when's the last time you saw one of our players that angry coming off uh, uh, it's, earlier, it's, when Dante Van Zier came off the field because he had to get subbed out, that's that well, was the time before. <laughs> okay, fair enough. But he I was mean, pissed. Honestly, I, I, Don, Dante's Dante's anger was at really at Reyes, right? That's because that situation caused it. Morgan's was like, you don't, you shouldn't be taking me off the fucking field right now. I'm, I want to fucking score this goal, right? Like it's a dip, it's a different anger. His Morgan's anger was like. I'm the best player out here right now. Why the fuck are you taking me off this this goddamn field? Like that's the energy I got from him. Van Ziers was, I don't deserve to come out because of Reyes' fucking mistake, which I don't blame him. But unfortunately, there's no way the Red Bulls were playing with three at the back. So right, right. Especially they're, they're, especially with only one center back, that wasn't going to happen. So somebody was the right. sacrificial lamb. It's just how it's going to be. But the the fact that we have this fire in our players this year. I feel like that's been lacking over the last few years. Yeah. Um, I would usually just do my usual like, which I've been doing for three, three years, and that's the, how the defense keeps this team in every single game they play. Um, but we kind of talked about where we wanted Elias Manuel to be that off-the-bench spark of energy, you know, in the second half, late in stages of the game. And he was that. Now, he didn't score. But what a difference he made. And down a man – when they did get to turn the ball over and had chances, you know, he, he looked great. Yeah. Right. We didn't score a goal, but I mean, that's, that's, it's not what Chicago brought on in the second half to try to get a goal. And that was one Tom Barlow, <laughs> which um, I, I am so thankful. He didn't put the dagger in our heart. That was everybody, the poetic justice, right? you know, everybody, when they saw him on the sideline, was thinking the same thing. Um, but he barely touched the ball. I mean, Chicago barely touched the ball in points in that game, but Manuel looked good coming off the bench. That's what you want. I have a little bit of more faith in that guy than anyone who's had coming off the bench in a while um, to create a goal or create that breakout pass. So, again, playing 11 on 11, I, I, it would look a little bit better than, you know, being down a man for that entire game and then him coming off the bench. But he looked good. And I feel like our counterattack was definitely better when he was on. Mm-hmm. Right, fresh fresh legs do a lot for a counter attack. So, yeah. All right. Um, any other thoughts on the Chicago match? It's just a bummer. 
It's just a bummer. The, the fans didn't get to see anything. You know, they saw a scoreless draw at home. You just hate dropping those points at home. That was a road game, right? You take it every day, every week, right? Road game, awesome. Uh, it's the fact that they're playing at home, fired up fans, nice evening, and just being down for a huge chunk of that game just totally sucked. I think if you took this game in a vacuum, right, didn't have factor in anything else that happened this season, you would say, all right, yeah, it sucks being down at home, but being down a man for over 45 minutes, regardless of wherever you are, getting a point is a great result. Mm-hmm. It's a good result. It's, 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 it's strong. It's good. It's the, it's the fact that we were – we're clearly on an uptick in terms of performance, and we derailed ourselves by one one second of idiocracy. Yeah, it's a, a dumb play. That's all it is. There's no, there's no excuse for what he did. It's just he was an idiot for a moment in time, and it cost the team. Yep. When they all were right. when they were going to VAR, and I'm like, and you knew he was in trouble. You're like, please somehow just just don't see anything. <laughs> the full love of God, like. I, it's I was completely like, obviously smashing the guy in the face. Maybe we get like, away with the one. I, cause I didn't, I didn't fully see it live because my focus wasn't on him. And I'm like, what the hell are they going to the, the replay for? Like, clearly they're it's yellow, and they're like, oh, yeah, that's a fucking red. The first time they yeah. show the replay, I'm like, yeah, it's he's, clear, he's red. yeah. Like, I was listening to Red Bulls guys, like, yeah, like this is a red. <laughs> <laughs> that's when you know it's bad. Yeah, and then they're like, we don't know how this is not a penalty kick. And it's like clearly they called it that the ball was not in play yet, and like we don't know how this wasn't really in play, but we'll take it. And the, and the Apple TV guys were saying the same thing. They they also couldn't understand, but th- that was the the rule. That was why. Yeah, we we were we got really lucky there because if that was a penalty kick, we lost. We probably lose that game. Yeah, right. Because there's more than likely the goals going in, and that's it. And then we have to defend for 45 minutes down a man, and at some point press because. We would need a goal. Yep. And open ourselves and get up. And then bust it up down a man on a counter. Yeah, exactly. So, all right. Uh, pain index, I forgot to pull one out. My bad. I'm going to assume for the most part we got sad or meh. Not, not really sick. Yeah. Just we just have to set a reminder for every, what would you say, Tuesday? Pain index Tuesday? Yeah, I got to I gotta just start doing it, like, scheduling the tweets. That's why I don't, I don't have to remember to do it, but... Is I always want the tweet to like have context of the game, and I just so I'm gonna try to be better on that one. Uh, predictions neither of us predicted a draw, so nobody gets a point. Um, we were optimistic. What can we say? Well, it shouldn't, yeah, no we reason not have to be been optimistic. Game. All right, uh, so now the Red Bulls will travel to take on uh, LAFC on the road this Saturday, April 20th, 10 30 p.m. Eastern Time. You know, I really wish. We had two home games in a row at some point soon. Like, I understand yeah. not giving us a lot of home games right away, but Jesus Christ, come on. Right back on the um, road. Here they go. Yep. Uh, LAFC comes into this match with a 3-2-3 three, three record, 11 points, a plus-one goal difference, number six in the Western Conference. Uh, Truman, since you were in the lead, you get to go first. What is your prediction for Saturday? I mean, I never like – a road game on the West Coast against a good LAFC team um, who have not lost at home yet, so that doesn't bode well. Um, I, I, I don't know, because I, I still like this team a lot. Um, I, I have to just go by my feeling of the way the Red Bulls have been playing for years and not how they're playing this year and just say a 2-1 loss, which, again, will be no reason to panic. Um, I just think it's a tough place to play on the West Coast, you know, you're already missing a defensive sub in, in Reyes because that's what I think he's going to permanently be, barring injuries. Um, I, I don't know. It's tough. I hope they come out like a ball of fire, pissed off after that game. Um, but it's it's going to be tough. This is a really tough road game in L.A. Yeah, especially because I, I didn't know what their home away records looked like uh, on on the road. LAFC are 0 3 and 1. At home, yeah. they're 3 0 and 1. So, yeah. yeah. All, all of their wins are coming at home. Yeah. Um, I feel like outside of the Columbus match, which honestly I think was kind of a. One of those like. Okay. What, what's the, the expression? Everybody has a plan to get punched in the face. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I feel like that's what this team, as much as it sucked to lose three nothing, I feel like that was the punch in the face that Red Bulls needed to see that plan A is not always the one that works. Um, because since then, granted, a small sample size, but since then, right, they haven't lost. They beat Miami. Granted, it was without Messi, but they beat Miami. They went on the road. They beat FC Cincinnati. Right, two big in conference games. And they stepped up to both of those challenges. I feel like the Red Bulls, to a degree, have proven that they can step up when needed. Uh, I think this will be another test for them, right? Going to a team that, as much as they're not near their MLS Cup winning caliber, they're still a, a team that's to be feared, especially in their building. Um, but I feel like this team is one of those teams that can rise to that challenge. Uh, I'm going to go in a different direction than you. I'm going to say we get a road point uh, with a 2-2 draw. It won't be pretty, but we will at least get out of there with a point. And honestly, listen, if we get out of there with a point, it's one really well earned. Listen, I'm sure we're all staying awake for this whole game, so they better get something out of it. But you're just going to parlay that into the, the F1 race, No. Right? Oh, God, no. <laughs> I'd have to drink like 14 Red Bulls to stay up for that race. I forgot. I don't even know when that's... What, what time that oh, 3 a.m. Never mind. Correct. I was, I was going to say, we'll get to that in half a second. <laughs> Actually, I moved it down, but yeah, we'll. I, I moved it to below Gotham and Ripples, too. But yeah, we'll, we'll get there. All right. Uh, any other thoughts on the LAFC game? Yeah, let's all just stay up and watch the game and have a good time. Yeah. All right. Uh, Gotham FC, still looking for another win. They have 1 1 draw at the Casey Current, or sorry, versus Casey Current at home. But at least they're not losing uh, four games played, 1-0-2 and two record. I'm sorry, three games played, 1-0-2 oh, record, four points. Uh, zero goal difference, number eight in the NWSL. Uh, their next match is away to the Washington Spirit uh, this Saturday, April 20th at 1 p.m. Uh, it's a good thing it's 1 p.m. Eastern time because with the bridge out in Baltimore, <laughs> their ride there and back is going to kind of suck. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh so I have not driven down there recently, even before the bridge collapse. I didn't drive down to Baltimore recently, but I've seen a lot of red show up on the map around Baltimore during the day. So I can't even fathom what it's like down there. I really can't. It's got to be absolutely yeah. bananas. Yeah, I've seen a few posts on Reddit where people were complaining about the the traffic backing up like a good hour earlier than it usually does on 95. So yeah, good God. And that was, and I think. The last post I saw was whenever the Orioles home opener was, because I think the game was at like seven and like three, three thirty, and they're complaining about traffic. So, right. Uh, New York Red Bulls two won their last match on penalty kicks, which I did not know this until I looked it up. A five five score during regulation. Just how the fuck do they score ten goals during regulation? I don't know. That's that's pretty crazy. Uh, that w- so at least a win against uh, Chicago FC United, that puts their record at three two and zero, 13 points plus four goal difference, number one in the East. Look at that, a Red Bulls team that's undefeated. That's five games, but still they're undefeated. The world of Red Bulls is rolling right now. Yeah. Uh, next match is uh, away to Philadelphia Union, number two. Then Sunday, April twenty first, three p.m. Eastern time. Uh, now it is time for the F1 update. And box now, box, box now, box for hard. Stay out, stay, stay out, stay out. Fuck, fuck! Why, what, what the fuck is Well, like we, like we kind of just mentioned, um, uh, the race is in China, hasn't been there for a while, and it's a 3 a.m. start, and there ain't no one in hell. Anyone is staying up to watch that race. No way. I, I, I couldn't even get remotely close to that. Not even close. Nope. Uh, but we got a, it's a sprint weekend, so you get the sprint. Uh, practice number one, I think, is tonight. So let's see. Yeah, tonight at 11.30. So that's the only thing you could possibly stay awake for as part of as part of the first practice. And I, Oh, and actually, the sprint race is, is um, 11 o'clock. So that's a possibility of staying awake for. But aside I'll from that. Because they changed it. The sprint race is before qualifying now. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So you got the sprint, and then you have qualifying. Um, 3 a.m. and then a race at 3 a.m. So can't wait to try to watch that sprint race. 
Yeah. But I mean, in case you didn't know, I think you all know Max is still in first. Sergio is in second. And uh, we plan on keeping it that way. Oh, yeah. I don't think it's going to change this weekend. And then what? They're off a week before Miami? Uh, yes. I think after Miami, they finally get some uh, assistant weeks in. Nope. Never mind. They can nope, take a week so off for Italy. They sure do. Then we get two weeks in a row. Then a week off, I think, before the Canadian GP. Then a week off before Canadian. I know they have a lot more races this year, but I feel like or like one more race than last year, but I feel like they are sprinting it out more than they need to. There, and there's so many breaks, and I mean, there's a lot of transportation. That's the thing. Is I think we talked about this on the show. Was you should watch the YouTube videos and how they actually transport everything because they have like two separate um, setups that go to different depending on where they are. It's it's pretty wild. You you would think. What is it, Liberty Media is the one that runs F1 at this point? You would think just from a logistics point of view that they would work on getting everything like, hey, if we're going to start down in Australia, we just kind of work our way up and over. Instead of just being like, all right, we're going to be in Australia, then over in the U.S., then over in Asia, then over here, and then there. Well, That's some logistics person. fun to bounce around. Yeah. I was going to say, I, I bet you the, like, the logistics people there are like just tearing their hair out every single day. Oh, yeah, because there's so much involved in it. Yeah. All right. Uh, with that, it is time for the dumping ground. I'm the trash man. All right. So do you have anything before we get into the topic, the news that actually just broke today? Is there anything else we want to talk about? Uh, we can bring up the other thing I put on the list. Uh, so over the weekend, Bayer Leverkusen clinched their first ever Bundesliga title uh, with five match days left. But more impressive thing is that they are currently undefeated with a 25 4 and 0 record. I think if they finish out the year undefeated, they would be the first ever team in Germany to win the top flight uh, as an undefeated team. I think. I'm not 100% sure, but I think that's what I saw somewhere on Reddit. But just imagine going a whole season and at this point only drawing four games and just winning the rest. What was when Arsenal went unbeaten? Um, what was their record? Because that's the that's the last team that I can remember. Um, that was the Thierry Henry led Arsenal. Patrick Vieira um, was on that team. So their 2003-04 season, known as the Invincible season, uh, in 38, they went undefeated in a total of 49 games, including 38 in the, the league. Uh, twelve. They won twenty six and drew twelve. Now, in fairness, in fairness, there are four more matches to um, a Premier League season. That's, but still, the fact that Leverkusen has twenty five wins at this it's point, unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. finally they can something they can stick it to Bayern Munich, who just win that thing every single year. It seems. Yeah, I think I saw a stat that uh, Munich has like thirty four German titles. Yeah. Kind of making me think, and the next closest is single digit. It, it's making me think that Xavi Alonso will not be the next coach of Liverpool. <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, only he takes this season and goes right there. But uh, I don't foresee that happening. I don't think so either. Um, but let's talk about the big news that dropped today: uh, the Premier League and the Football Association made a decision without talking to. Any other teams in any of the other leagues in the championship, League alone, League Two, nothing. That after the first round of the FBA Cup, there will be no more replays. Insane decision. I don't, I mean, it's all about money and it's all about, <laughs> that, that does get a splat. Um, I feel like it's pretty much six teams in the FA saying, we don't want to add on to our already busy schedule. That's basically I, the Champions League and Europa League and Conference League saying no. Um, I'm hoping that that was a hasty decision and that they go back on it because you go on Twitter and you can see all the other teams in the lower divisions are fucking pissed off, deservedly, because those replays bring in money for these lower league teams. Yeah. Some teams, like, save their season, make their budget on, like, a single replay just for TV rights for ticket sales because they do share, even if they're playing at the other stadium, you know, say a small club ends up playing at Arsenal in a replay, they get a share of all that. They get a share of the yeah. ticket sales, you know, the TV rights, everything. That's huge money for these small teams, huge. 
Um, and, and what I don't get is like the re, the FA, or I'm sorry, the, the Premier League teams don't even come in until like what, like the third or fourth round. So why, if that's the case, why not just stop the replays when the Premier League enters? Also, that's your half, half of these Premier League teams, probably more than half, in those early rounds are playing their B teams. You yeah. know, if if they're playing Dag and Red, they're playing like their 18 year old youth team on on the lineup. They're not playing a bunch of starters. Let's say the top 10 to 12 play their B team. Everybody else maybe maybe playing a handful of starters. Right, like teams kind of in the bottom of Premier League championship sides. Like it's the one thing that they you know they have a chance of winning because um, you just and more importantly never their roster it. like Everton's kind of sucks and it really isn't a good beat squad to put out there. Right. So the, the teams that are really making this decision, it, it, they they barely care about it in those early stages. I, it, if you want to do that in the last couple rounds, I I guess I mean maybe, um, but to not even to talk to all these other clubs who's f- can financially gain from those replays, it, it's it's absurd. Yeah. I mean, just go. I would say go on Twitter and just look it up and just see all the teams putting out um, statements because there's tons of them, tons and tons and tons of teams. See what my what my team had to say. They're probably keeping quiet. They don't want to get somehow penalized again, right? Yeah, true. They have they have the um, the appeal for their two point deduction, so they're going to keep quiet. They didn't say anything. Forgot the Everton play on Sunday. I was I was like, oh shit, they're going to play Saturday and. Saturday, my weekend's going to be ruined. Well, at least Saturdays. I mean, here you go. This is from Chester Football Club. Um, it is deeply concerning that these changes have been announced without consulting the 144 clubs who make up the English Football League and National League, nor the hundreds across the football pyramid who enter the FA Cup each season. This demonstrates an alarming lack of respect for the wider game and its fans and reinforces the urgent need for a strong independent football regulator. Yep. This is one lower division team. You can go through like I said, dozens and dozens of Twitter accounts of these teams. Yep. It's fucked up. It's fucked up, man. I just, I don't understand how they can do that. I mean, we know it's, it's all about money and who has it. And then I think on top of that, they're going to move the FA cup final to before the last weekend of the league season. Like what it hasn't the FA cup always been the last game or the last match in the English calendar. Yeah, and then the, and right, and but if unless they're in Champions League final, like that's always like the last big game. Yeah, but my point is like the specific English calendar ends with the FA Cup, right? It's one thing for the Champions League, but right, right, Premier League Championship, all those things end before the FA Cup final. It's just how it's always been, and then all of a sudden now that's going to be before the last Premier League game. It doesn't make sense. It's, it's just fucking ridiculous. You know, what team is it's pissed like. One of my yeah. favorite teams are pissed. Fucking embarrassing! It is. You know who's mad? Dorking Wanderers F- FC. Why'd you piss off <laughs> Dorking Wanderers? Um, I was gonna say it's like, it's like they look at what MLS and US soccer went through. Oh my like, god! You know what? That's a good idea. Let's fuck with tradition. Yeah. That's basically what I think it comes down to. All right. Anything else in for dumping ground? No, that, that I think that that was really the one big piece of news that I think piss. I mean, it just, just broke today. That people are pissed off. Yeah. All right. Uh, with that, it's time for Truman's terrible team of the week. That's terrible. How about this? How about instead of one team, point, we're gonna give it to the city of Liverpool, because um, <laughs> you and I were both both advocating for our own team, which is weird. Majorly disappointed over the weekend. Um, by two completely different losses. Uh, Everton lost, what, 6-0 to Chelsea? Yeah, and I made the suggestion when it was 5, so... Yeah, so there you go. So 6-0. But what is worse, that and being uh, a point or two out of the regulation zone, um, or Liverpool losing at home to Crystal Palace, bumping them to third place, when if they if they had won that game, they would have, again, been in the control of their own destiny to win the Premier League. But, of course, the Liverpool, they can't do it. They gave up this early goal to a middling team and cannot score. And they missed multiple opportunities in the second half. Open shots. So many so many chances. And this is the team, you know, they bow out of Europa, kind of an embarrassing fashion, getting blown out at home 3 nothing in the first leg. 
Um, winning the second one, one nil, which meant nothing. So you lose that, you know, FA cup knocked out this knocked out. And then that game against crystal palace is just absolutely embarrassing, which more than likely cost them the premier league. See, I personally, I, I say this as the Everton fan, I think the Everton situation is worse because one, you got Liverpool will still be up. Two, Liverpool's only two points off of a title waste. And yes, I get it. Man City is amazing. So the possibility of getting two points on them is very, very slim. However, Everton, they had a six goal advantage over Nottingham Forest prior to that match against Chelsea. They squandered that. They are only two points away from safety and have to face, I think, hold on, let me check the schedule. I don't remember if we faced all these. I know we faced Sondam Forest. Um, we faced Brentford. So, so Sheffield United. So four of our last six are against teams like or near us or below us, right? So in a relegation fight, and now you have to, so basically what that, losing that goal difference means is now they have to be Nottingham Forest and Luton Town and Burnley and Brentford because they're not beating Liverpool. They're not beating Arsenal. Right. They, they got to probably at minimum win at least two of those games. And especially the ones against Nottingham Forest and Luton Town because they're below everything in the standing. But blowing the goal advantage like this and not knowing what's happening with the points deduction and they're Premier League saying when they announced the two point deduction that they don't agree with Everton's stance on the stadium. And in theory, there could be more points deductions coming. Like they were never beating Chelsea, but to lose six by six like that, where Chelsea's Chelsea had one player score four goals, the fourth of which came on a penalty kick where the team where Chelsea players were literally fighting over the ball to take the penalty kick. Uh, my, my only thing is I'm just glad I was at work and I, I was told not to bother watching. So, Good lord. I mean, it's really fucking embarrassing. Three the three teams that we collectively watched could not score a single goal that weekend. It wouldn't have mattered in <laughs> Everton's <laughs> in their world no, it, it would have not have mattered. mattered. Well, it would have helped with goal difference at least. That's true. That's true. Could we could not see one of our teams score a goal. La 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 lowest common denominator. <laughs> I, don't know, I feel like that one was appropriate because zero goals. Classic. So. You haven't played that in a while, so. No, we haven't. There's a bunch on here. I haven't played in a while. All right, anyway. Um, all right, is that it? Are we wrapping up this one? I think, I think we're wrapping it up. Okay. Uh, you can visit us at patreon.com. One dollar a month gets you exclusive content whenever we decide to do it. Uh, email us, redbullrant at gmail.com. If you want to call us, 973-348-5329. Facebook.com slash Red Bull Rand. On Twitter at Red Bull Rand for the show. At Dr. Stooge myself. At the Truman for Truman. Subscribe to the show via iTunes, YouTube Music, YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify. Pretty much anywhere you can find a podcast. Last words before we get out of here. Yeah, it'd be delightful if I stayed up late Saturday night to get a Red Bull uh, victory. So make it worth our while. You know, we're all staying up for this. We're all going to be watching together. Um, surprise us and win. Agreed. Uh, so for Truman and myself, this has been episode 456 of the Red Bull Rant. Thank you guys for tuning in, and as always, go Red Bull. See ya.